Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage one of Giro d'Italia. Now, it's 2022. We've seen a lot of aggressive, aggressive racing throughout the 2022 season. But right here for stage one, I can tell you, you guys can nap through this stage because it was slow going through the, main, through the main parts of this whole stage. And it's a 195 kilometer stage, about 120 miles, but it's pretty much bone flat. And then a just over 5.5 kilometer climb at under 5%. So you start knowing that it gives the sprinters a little bit of a shot of being able to win today's stage. But if you tuned in to yesterday's Beyond the Coverage, you know my number one pick here to win, of course, had to be Matthew Vanderpool. It's everybody's number one pick. So it's not really a big secret that's let out of the bag there to know that Matthew Vanderpool has to be the big favorite here. Now, when the race starts, it's Tagliani and Bias, both from Drone Harper. These two riders will get some massive time of about 10 and a half minutes on today's stage, but then it's Alpacine Phoenix in the back right. Now they'll start to get a little bit of help from Intermarche and EF Education. With those three teams chasing on the front, that time gap drops down quite quickly and gets to about four minutes with about 100 kilometers to go. Now, let me point something out because it's DSM, their whole team riding fourth wheel throughout today's stage. And they're up there the whole time throughout today's stage. Now, this is a stage that could have been really calm and relaxed. Now, I know I tell you guys, you never ride at the back of the peloton. But if there was ever a day to be at the back of the peloton, this is the day to do it because there's no wind. It's pancake flat. Two riders out there with a whole lot of time. So if you want to enjoy the back of the peloton, which I do not endorse, but if you're going to do it, this is the stage to do it. And we'll see a few of the favorites back there from time to time. Now, early in today's stage, I saw Mark Cavendish pull over the side of the road and he switches from his aero bike to his climbing bike. I was pretty astonished while sitting on the couch watching this happen because I did not think Mark Cavendish was going to put any effort at all in today's stage. But clearly, if you're changing bikes, you must have some kind of motivation to try to stay up there at the front and try to win today stage one. So he switches bikes, gets back on his bike. But when we get later in the stage, we're going to see Mark Cavendish at the back of the peloton. When we start talking 30 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 15 kilometers to go, it's Mark Cavendish still sitting at the back of the peloton. Now the breakaway up front, that time gap had dropped so fast that we knew they had no chance of winning today's stage. And they'll get wrapped back up with about 15 kilometers to go in today's stage. Realistically, the only exciting thing that happened throughout today's stage was watching Mark Cavendish change his bike and then the first early sprint that was won by Giacomo Nizzolo from Israel Premier Tech. Now, with about 15 kilometers to go, we know it's going to be the big push for the final climb of today's stage that's just under 5% that's going to highlight today's stage. So, if you slept through all of it, you don't need to back up and watch any parts of the early stage, but you definitely want to tune in with about 15 kilometers to go. At just under 7 kilometers, there's going to be a crash at the back of the peloton, and that's going to take out Bahrain victorious Jan Trapnik out of the picture of today's stage one. Up front, nobody's slowing down. It's curb to curb, and they're fighting for every bit of real estate to try to come into this final last right turn before the climb starts proper. Lotto Sudol will win the battle to start the climb at the front. And DSM, who rode the front throughout the, all of today's stage, right behind the three riders of EF Education, Intermarche, and of course, Albacine Phoenix that did all of the work throughout today's stage. DSM, they rode the whole time at the front. And when this last right-hand corner happens, it's Lotto Sudol at the front and not DSM. So they wasted a ton of energy on today's stage. Now, when we get on the climb proper, we're going to see there's going to be an attack right away. And it's going to come from AG2R, Lawrence Nason. Nason wasn't even supposed to be part of the Giro. He got a last call up, and here he is throwing in a big attack. Behind, we're going to see Enos on the front with three riders with Richard Carapaz, my number one favorite here at the Giro d'Italia. Richard Carapaz had looked brilliant at the start of this climb. But I want to point something out. I want to back the camera up just a little bit because Richard Carapaz at the start of this climb, he's only with one teammate most of the time. I did see occasionally another teammate would pop up, but now with Lawrence Nason up front, the AG2R rider, all of a sudden it's Enos on the front for the first time throughout today's stage one here at Giro d'Italia. With Richard Carapaz locked into the third position, Enos riding on the front. We know with Lawrence Nason up front, he's got a bit of a gap, but with those teams riding back there, you got to believe he's going to get pulled back in. 
Now there's going to be another attack just up over two kilometers to go from the line. And it's going to be Leonard Kamna from Bora Hansgrohe that throws in a big attack. He'll bridge across up to Lawrence Nason and blow right by the AG2R rider now going solo. Now this looks like a legitimate shot here of winning today stage one and taking the pink jersey at the Giro d'Italia for Bora Hansgrohe. Because Leonard Kamna, he's a winner. He's got stage wins at the Tour de France and he's got a gap on the group behind. He's got a solid seven, eight second gap on all the favors. But Intermarche is back on the front of the peloton set in tempo. Biniam Gourmet sitting second, third wheel back there. Looks like he's got some flying form for the Eritrean from Africa. He's in perfect position. Remember, he hasn't done much racing before the Giro d'Italia started, but he's on form right here in solid position with his Intermarche team on the front. Leonard Kamna up front with about one kilometer to go. We start seeing the legs fall off. The Bora Hansgrohe rider as his pace starts to slow. Enter Marche right around the front of the peloton. He starts blowing. We see him look over his shoulder, hoping there's some kind of help back there. It's going to come, but it's going to come in a form of another attack because it's UAE Team Emirates Davi Day Formula that throws in the big attack. Now we start to see Caleb Ewan Lotto Sudol, number one sprinter in the world. Caleb Ewan, he is solidly locked up, third, fourth wheel there from the front as Davi Day Formula is throwing in a big attack. Now when Davi Day Formula finally starts to slow with around five. 500 meters to go. We see Caleb Ewan solidly still at the front. With 400 meters to go, Caleb Ewan Lotto Sudol is on the front of the GC favorites here at Giro d'Italia trying to lock in stage one win here for Lotto Sudol. Now, this, this was a little bit showing too much when I'm sitting on the couch. All I'm thinking about is last year's Milano San Remo with Caleb Ewan, who was on flying form and climbing like a monster that year at the Milano San Remo. Now we fast forward back here to 400 meters to go. Watching Caleb Ewan on the front, I'm thinking, oh man, this is a bit too early to still be on the front, Caleb Ewan. He's there, he's protecting and trying to win here at stage one. Now we start seeing another attack coming from Wilco Kellerman with Magnus Court Nelson, EF Education, locked on his wheel. Caleb Ewan will solidly follow the attack from Bora Hansgrohe rider Wilco Kelderman as he slots in the third wheel. Now when I back the film up, we go a little bit further down with still a few hundred meters before that attack. I want to show you Benny M. Gourmet, who was sitting third wheel when his Intermarche teammates were on the front. He had slotted a little bit further back and he was on the wheel of Matthew Vanderpool, today's number one favorite to win stage one here at the Giro d'Italia. Now with about 400 meters to go, we see Benny M. Gourmet. He's moved up to position in the front of the GC favorites here for the Giro d'Italia and trying to win here at stage one. As Wilco Kellerman's fading at the front, Magnus Court Nelson, EF Education, takes the front here with about 200 meters to go. Caleb Ewan is solidly locked onto the EF Education rider's wheel. But on the left side of the picture there, we're going to see Biniam Gourmet enter Marche, start his acceleration at about 200 meters to go. 150 meters to go as they're coming out of the right bend. It's the air train that's taking the lead here on stage one. Gerald D'Italia behind. Caleb Ewan is starting to fly around Magnus Court Nelson between the right fencing and the EF Education rider. As he passes Magnus Court Nelson, he'll slot onto the air train wheel, Biniam Gourmet. But Matthew Vanderpool started his own acceleration. Now with 100 meters to go, it's Matthew Vanderpool on the left, Biniam Gourmet on the right. Caleb Ewan is slotted behind on Biniam Gourmet's wheel. With about 75 meters to go, we're going to see Matthew Vanderpool start taking a slight lead here over the air train rider as they're coming to the line. With 50 meters to go, sitting third position is going to be Lotto Sudel's Caleb Ewan, who now overlaps wheels with Biniam Gourmet's back wheel and hits the ground hard with about 50 meters to go. Just as Matthew Vanderpool had started taking a solid lead here for the stage one win. Matthew Vanderpool continues a solid acceleration on the pedals to take a towering victory here for stage one. Gerald D'Italia and the pink leader's jersey and just about every other jersey on today's stage two. Now, second place, Biniam Gourmet. This was his debut at Grand Tours. Finishing second on the stage and remember, at one point in time there with about 100 meters to go, 125 maybe I'll call it, it looked like Biniam Gourmet had a shot, a legitimate shot here beating Matthew Vanderpool to the stage one victory here at the Giro. And it was only by the power of Matthew Vanderpool's 
towering form and legs that he was able to win today's stage one. It took everything for Matthew Vanderpool to be able to pull out this win here. When he crossed the line, there was no celebration. There was no raising of the arms. The head dropped down from both riders there from first and second place as both riders were clearly exhausted. Now, third pale Bill Bow from Bahrain Victorious will take third after Caleb Ewan. Lotto Sudell crashed hard. Now, when we go back and dissect the crash of Caleb Ewan, Everything, from my point of view, looks like it was the Australian's fault. He came up onto the wheel just as Biniam Gourmet started to slow and the legs started to blow as Matthew Vanderpool was passing him with the deacceleration from Biniam Gourmet at the front. And I'm assuming there was a last big acceleration from Caleb Ewan trying to be able to throw in a last acceleration with 50 meters to go. And what happens? He just touches the back wheel of Biniam Gourmet and crashes hard. 100% from what I could tell looks like it was Caleb Ewan's fault. Now behind with the GC favorites. There was a little bit of gap about four seconds back. But other than that, it looks like all of the GC riders here on today's stage one made it throughout the state, made it safely to the finish with just losing about four seconds to Matthew Vanderpool up front without any big GC favorites up there except for Carapaz and Wilco Kelderman. Those guys made the split up front. Now behind, the only guy I saw of the GC favorites that really missed anything would be Wout Poles from Bahrain Victorious. Everyone else avoided the crashes from what I can tell and avoided the splits at the end of today's stage one. So tomorrow's individual time trial should be a big deal here at the Giro d'Italia. But Matthew Vanderpool, the commentators were telling us he was in Spain before Giro started here and was training on his TT bike. So should be ready to defend his race lead here of at the Giro d'Italia. Now, the favorites, the GC favorites, Richard Carapaz, when I dissect his ride up this final five and a half kilometers, climb here to the finish of today's stage one, he looks solid, always at the front, always in the right position, at times very limited with Enos teammates. Like I said yesterday and the day before and beyond the covers, Enos do not look as solid as they have in the past. Because remember, if this was the Tour de France, we're hitting the last climb here with 5.5 kilometers to go. Is there ever a time during the Chris Froome years, Bradley Wiggins years with Sky and Enos that you ever saw just two and three Enos riders at the front with 5.5 kilometers to go and even later into today's final climb? So it's going to be interesting, very, very interesting whether or not if Enos can support Carapaz. But, but Carapaz looks fantastic, so should still be the big number one favorite here for the general classification here at Giro d'Italia. Tomorrow state individual time trial stage is a lot on the line for all the GC favorites. So make sure you guys like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next edition of The Butterfly Effect.